Podcast time. Well, that's right. Ben for Tools is proud to present the Home Improvement Podcast. My name is Adam. You're my co-host, Jordan. Hey, Jordan, is it hot in here or is it just me? Ooh, it's steamy. Uh, I almost didn't even want to start the show because we had so many things to talk about pre-show just between you and I. So um, maybe we postpone this episode next week and we just talk more to each other. What do you think? No? <laughs> I you want to think... do the episode? Uh, yeah, I mean... I... You know, like like I've what you're saying is my friendship is not that important to you. We used to talk to each other about things other than home improvement, I, and I I don't want to blame the birth of your daughter, but I feel as though your uh, patience for me uh, with regards to my phone calls has changed, and you're not reaching out as much. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> things change, people change, et cetera, et cetera. But um, you know, I think this is just kind of a professional relationship these days. <laughs> Oh and then when the podcast is done, ooh. then stop stop trying to text me at night, okay? What did I say? <laughs> I don't want to say this on uh, air. Oh, yeah. oh well, it's awkward. Oh, it's okay. very awkward. Forget about it. Okay, uh, I don't remember. Um, yeah, it's hot in here. Set up, set up, set up. Hot takes, home improvement, hot takes. Um, <laughs> I just said set up instead of doing it. Basically, Jordan. What I want to do at the start of this show, everybody, you know, we're living in a hot take culture. Mm. People say things off the cuff. Do they believe it? Is it research? What do they think? Um, For me, I'm kind of defining hot takes as um, opinions that do not uh, work in unison with the popular crowd, the the usual line of thinking. These are things that maybe uh, other people aren't saying, but that we do believe, or at least believe somewhat. Um... Yeah, so like a hot take, an example for listeners that might be older, a hot take would be uh, a hot take. Uh, Elf is a better show than Home Improvement. No whoa, one believes whoa, whoa. it. No one believes it. That's why it's a hot take. Uh, I'm just fighting words. I know, I couldn't even, I almost got sick as I said it. Hey, Ugh. dude, feed me a cat. <laughs> Um, I think uh, once every other season we get an elf reference. Been a minute, yeah. I'm actually going to try to pile in like all of the old references into these last however many episodes we're doing. And uh, it worked last week. You added. We came up with a schedule, and you added something. And I don't know if you were serious or not about it. A <laughs> Halloween. I think you were joking. <laughs> but if you were, um, I'd be curious to see and hear what that looks like. Yeah, I you didn't really comment on it when I put it in there, so I didn't know if you liked it or not, or if you even saw it. But Definitely saw it. Uh, I'll just say, so we added a schedule, and things are probably going to be wrapping up around the middle of October, the way things are going. And uh, there's talks of things maybe happening afterwards, no guarantees. Um, but you added a Drac is Back Halloween special? Yeah, I think the last like day of recording was right like the week before Halloween, so I was like, wow, we can't... Can you just, like, go by Halloween when it's right there? And then, of course, I, you know Drac's going to want to come back on. I mean, it's so. not a question of whether or not Drac's going to want to come back on, but it, it is a question of what we would talk about and or cover for that mm. episode. It would be interesting. And <laughs> it'd be funny if we just did, like, nothing. And Halloween then the conversation. Lis- <laughs> the listenership went through the roof, but that seems unlikely. But, yeah, we're, we're thinking about Halloween already. That's okay. okay. All right, okay, all right. Uh, From what I hear, I think... You know, there might be some false stuff hitting the shelves already, so yeah, makes sense. That, there is, yeah. Uh, only thing I can think of is uh, Halloween wise is Brad stars in the Rage uh, Zachary Ty Bryan rather stars in the Rage Carry Two, which you know I don't know. I don't I don't know that I would like to watch. It that, would be but. I would love for you to have to watch that though, <laughs> uh, but that might be enough to just sort of uh, yeah. Can't we watch that like cheerleader thing that we watched in college? Uh, what's his name? <laughs> you're con- you're conflating a couple different things. Uh, we gotta get into these hot takes, Jordan. My fingers are burning. All right. My fingers Sorry. are burning. Sorry. Why don't you pass the potato? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> how many do you have? I don't know. We'll decide later. <laughs> okay, I have two, two to three. I think I should start with my first one. Okay, and then right, we I think ha- I should go some, first. We have some from the listeners as well. Seem to have been some confusion from our our listeners and our Twitter. Uh, 
friends as to what a hot take was. Some people are just kind of like saying things that are definitely true. Uh-huh. Um, but whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll share the good ones. So give me your first one. And, uh, whew, ah, if the Will Salvador were part of this, it'd be one hundo. Hit me with it. I mean, it's, it's steamy because it's a hot take, but it's also steamy because of the content. So here's what it is. Home Improvement is one of the sexiest sitcoms of all time. Oh, wow. That's pretty you ready good. For this? All right. Uh, so we're going to be hey, talking about an episode. Uh, you guys hear about this? You guys hear about this? <laughs> this episode is what made me think of it, first of all, yeah, because okay. we'll talk about that more in this episode. But we've got Ian, Beefcake Ian, that uh, there's many flirtation, flirtatious scenes between her and Jill. Uh, we've got Eye on Tim, your favorite episode of the series where that, that reporter comes on to Tim. We've got the shower scene with Tim and, oh. uh, and Nancy. <laughs> yeah. I and then basically, I, rem- I remember. Uh, yeah, I know. And then basically every episode ends with Tim and Jill making out at some point. Yeah. And we, we can only guess where the makeouts lead to, but, uh, you know, right. You're right, Jordan. This is a really, it's a really good take. Uh, I agree with it. I would have never considered this prior to no our, our rewatch i just i don't know if i i just didn't think about it or, or didn't pick up on it but it is a very sexual show very sexual um you know other sexy shows i can't even sitcom wise it's just it is interesting how much sex devil entendre and just all of that stuff they pack into a, a 22 minute mm-hmm. family sitcom yeah yeah, I would say so. Yeah, family so I mean, things that I remember watching, I felt like Friends was kind of like it, but not in the same way, necessarily. It was much more comedic than I think some of these episodes end up being for Home Improvement. It's much like the 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 shower scene is comedic, sure. It ends up, you know, at one point Marty's pretending to be somebody in the shower or whatever. Mm, yeah. But that was good. That was really good, I think. <laughs> but it's not necessarily played for comedy in this I on Tim sort of way where or Ian or a lot of these episodes, I don't know. It it, it doesn't seem like a joke as it is in some other ones. So I, don't I actually know. kinda like it because like I feel like uh, current family sitcoms are just, and I don't watch any of them, but I've seen enough to probably know they're just very sanitized and they're kind of skipping all of that stuff. And mm-hmm. I, and I think in many ways, like the, they're just like more puritanical and stuff. And I, and I think the nineties sort of, I don't know, I, I sort of like, you know, obviously sometimes it gets a little silly where every episode they're like, you know, Jill straddling Tim and you know, what's going to happen next. But I don't know. I kind of appreciate it to be honest. Uh, it's, it's more realistic to true life. You know, the nineties were a no rules type of time. <laughs> yep. Is that a hot take? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, not hot take. That's just truth. Everyone knows that. That's a good start, Jordan. Okay. Um, right. mine, I don't think will surprise people, but it, it does work in it, it's uh, contrarian to what I think many people believe. But, um, I think that, Zachary Ty Bryan as Brad is a better performance and a better, more interesting character than Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Randy. He's my favorite kid. Hot I kind of knew you were going to say this, actually. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've all but said it a million times, but like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think Zachary Ty Bryan is a better actor than Jonathan Taylor Thomas. He's not. He doesn't have the range. He can't, he can't play the emotional stuff as well. Um, but I just think he's supremely cast they got very lucky as a young man and and maybe they wrote the character around the actor but i just think you know this is a comedy and he's besides tim he's the second funniest person on the show in my opinion and as he's gotten older he's just really able to handle that and he's become if not my favorite character one of my favorite characters and i and i you know randy left obviously but like you still have seven seasons of them kind of you know working back and forth and i just think for me Brad is more interesting, and, and it's, a, it's a better performance overall. Hot take. What I think, yeah, it's, it's not a bad take. I think it, what's interesting is, I feel like when they were younger, Randy is the funnier of the two, and as they get older, it kind of flips, because Randy becomes more serious, he's more interested in journalism, all that kind of stuff, and Brad just kind of is goofy, a little bit more goofy, and, and, and grows into that role a little bit more. So it is interesting how they kind of flip-flop in those years. And I think a lot of it is like, okay, Rand, as Randy gets older, like they're giving him more like, I don't know, heavy sort of side plots. Like 
you know, talking with that older woman who dies or like journalism and like Brad's Brad's is like, hey, yo, or I'm dating an older woman or I'm smoking weed, which is just kind of inherently more funny. But I, I don't know. I just think he's really, really good. And uh, I think he's the best kid. There you go. There you go. All right. The rest of mine are not good. I will say that. So it's not going to be nearly as insightful as the sexiest sick, one of the sex- sexiest sitcoms of all time. One of the but... hardest things to say as well. I would say so. Um, I'm going to say my next one is Al is less integral to the show oh, than, man. than basically anyone else besides Heidi. This is my second one, and it's not the same wording, but mine is that Al is much less interesting of a character than I thought he was growing up. And, mm-hmm. and I think we're kind of talking about the same thing here. So I'll, I'll let you go yeah. first, but that that's definitely one of mine. Yeah, that was my second Yeah, one. I just, as we watch it more and more, I'm sort of shocked by how little he is used on the show and in episodes. He's just basically on tool time, does the same thing over and over again. Very, I mean, I felt like earlier on they did a lot more of like, oh, he's in, with Eileen, maybe he's watching the kids, you know, he's staying with Tim. There was more of that dynamic. But as the series has gone along, he, I don't, like, he just, there's not really any memorable moments for I me. would say there's, the problem with Al is there's absolutely no character growth at all. Like, mm-hmm. and I, a lot of the times, like, character growth is pretty subtle. But, like, they've just been, he's been in the same situations, and, like, they don't use him hardly at all. Once every five, six episodes, we'll get an Al, Al-centered Al uh, plot, and it's like, he's moving into, like, he just services other characters. He's moving into this house Tim bought. Tim's going to be a bad landlord, and Al's going to be there. Or, like, Al created this crazy board game. Like, they, I, he's beloved, um, and, I, and I think I think he's, I'm not trying, I like Richard Karn, and I'm not trying to disparage him. Um, it's just more like, I don't know, they just seemed like they didn't know what to do with him after a while. Yes. He's just kind of, he's there on tool time, he's doing his thing. He always looks great. Uh, I think his popularity, hes I think a lot of his popularity is tied to the fact that, like, he's not as outwardly, like, conservative and, like, Tim Allen, you know, he I think Tim Allen hurts his own uh, case in many ways just with the things he's said and done in the past, and Karn has kind of avoided that, so he's become, like, a safe person to say you liked in the flannel and and, and, and so on. But, like, yeah, I, I just don't. The character is not super interesting, uh, mm-hmm. and as time goes on, it's less and less interesting. And it is surprising how popular and like sort of ingrained in the culture he is, despite the fact that like he doesn't really get much play. You know, it's just it's maybe very that strange. just speaks to Richard Carnes' power as an actor. Yeah, you know, to to become memorable based on what we've seen. So yeah, I mean, he ma- he made a in a lot like. I don't think they had big plans for the role in general, you know? So like he Mm -hmm. definitely carved out a quarter for himself, but like growing up, like I thought, man, Al was just like so essential to the show. And as time has gone on, it seems the opposite is true. So, yeah. Well, on the the same, same wavelength there. So do you have any more you want to share? Um, I have two. We can just run through them if, if you want, if you don't feel strongly about them. Yeah. I don't feel that strongly about this one. Uh, Jeff is the best Taylor brother. <laughs> I like Steve, who you never see. I think he's well, he does not count. It's like basically Marty or Jeff, and okay. it's like oh. okay, all right. Poor Marty, he's he's portrayed very sad. I think it's a uh, use, it's a usage rate thing. Like Marty is a usage rate yeah. thing. That's why I didn't really want to litigate that okay. very much. But the last one is Tim is the best actor on the show, and part of this is because kind of like the opposite of Al. He, they're just using him constantly in every situation and the growth and everything. So we just see much more of a range than we see with any other character. So it's more of opportunity more than anything else. But it, it goes to the fact that I think we've talked about this many times before. Just Tim is a way better actor than we ever realized and thought he was going to be rewatching the show. So Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. And you're, and you're right. Like he, I mean, I don't, if there was like a breakdown of like, seconds on screen like throughout the show like man he's he's in like 70 percent of the scenes he's got to be maybe even more, more. maybe even more like he's probably i was thinking like 90 yeah so. i mean yeah that could very well be so yeah i definitely agree with you um and that's been something that we've kind of uh been focusing on since since the early days like he's he's really good i don't think i've ever watched this show and and thought that his acting was anything anything less than than solid you know and no, he's, they've had him do stupid things yeah he's but had like, bad, like like dumb 
like dumb sort of stuff to do. But like, I don't know. That's not really on him, you know. So. All right. Do you, do you have any more, or is it time to hear what our listeners? I have one more. Have to say. Um, and I don't know. It could it could open a a, a much larger conversation. Oh. But I don't know. It, it kind of can or it cannot. Um, I think the idea that home improvement hasn't aged well. I I think it's aged well, and I disagree with it. I think Home Improvement has aged as well as any '90s sitcom has, with the exception of maybe Seinfeld. Uh, and I think that, and I think that the, that kind of rhetoric is happening for a couple different reasons. Like, I've watched Home Improvement with you for five years, and like, like every '90s sitcom, some jokes don't work. Attitudes have mm-hmm. changed, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think that Home Improvement has aged any worse than any other '90s sitcom. Like. Even Seinfeld, like, which is beloved, and I like Seinfeld more than Home Improvement. Like, even Seinfeld has, like, bits and jokes and subplots that don't work because, like, I don't know, it's been 30 years and, and some things haven't withstood the test of time. But, like, I think that there is this prevailing idea out there that, like, Tim is just, like, this super mis- misogynist and, like, jail is just a housewife and so on and so forth. And I really think the opposite is true. And even if it is true from time to time, like, Tim is, no one's saying Tim is the smartest person. He's always proven wrong. And I, and I just think that uh, the show has aged as good as a family sitcom can. And, and I think that that opinion is just very, very false. And I think that the reason that opinion is out there is because critics never liked Home Improvement in the first place. Uh, critics, you know, like coastal elites, they just like, I don't know, they are never going to feel very strongly about a Midwestern family sitcom because like, I don't know, they, most of them haven't like lived that life. They don't understand it. It's foreign to them. They've not met people like this, but I don't know, like there are dudes like Tim and the Taylors are pretty representative of like, I don't know, a regular Midwest family. And I think that like sort of in many ways, the cultural gatekeepers, critics or like people in the industry, uh, never liked the show in the first place. It didn't really win a ton of awards. And it was just like, Uh, a viewership juggernaut like ratings were sort of through the roof and it was because like I don't know regular quote-unquote people liked it and I think that like sort of regular people still champion it but it it is sort of a a thing wherein like the critics will still sort of write pieces and people will be like I can't believe Home Improvement was so popular it's like I can it's just like a wholesome mostly funny well-acted show about like a regular family in the Midwest And, and that is I don't know, that's always going to be appealing to people in the Midwest and sort of in, you know, not in New York and and L.A. So I think it has aged well, and uh, I am very dismissive of the opinion that it hasn't. So I wonder, do you, I don't know, do you think there will ever be, because like The Office is going through this right now, and I feel like the the Friends has gone through this, and Seinfeld to a certain point when we were growing up too, I think, uh, went through like this like second life. And do we do we ever think that home improvement will get that opportunity? No, um, and I think it's just for the same. Like I think it's for the same reason I just said. Like I, yeah. I, for that to happen, like people writing articles have to champion it. Critics have to champion it. And I think that there is a lot of uh, bad feelings towards Tim Allen. And I just I don't know. It would surprise me if that happened. Um, yeah. It is interesting, too, because for that to happen, at, the, at least, like, in this day and age, you have to have it available on, like, some sort of streaming yeah, service. Right, and, yeah, and for sure. And it's no longer on Hulu. So, like, I, you know, if it hopped on to Netflix or whatever, or Disney+, Plus, maybe that would be a thing. But it's not, for some reason, on one of those platforms right now. So. Yeah, I don't understand why it's not on Disney+. Plus. That I, That's really confusing to me. But right. Yeah. Okay, right. so well, that that was interesting. I I agree with that take as well. So thank you. All right, so let's hear what some people had to say. I'm only going to share a few. Uh, ben Pope says, "Alan Eileen should have worked it out and stayed together." Uh, I almost said that one. <laughs> I mean, that whole thing is just like I don't know. That was so deflating because we spent so much time with them, and I and I think that they are they were a good and kind of interesting couple and gave and gave uh, the Carman things to do. And then just, like, all of a sudden we get to that wedding episode and it's just like, all right, well, see you later. 
Uh, and I, then, and then, like we know, we know that he's you know going to end up with Trudy, but it just feels like they haven't built that up at all. How many Trudy episodes? There's been like two Trudy episodes, you know? Yeah, there was w- the one where she's rich, and then the one where she's weird, and that's it. Rich, rich Trudy, poor Trudy, weird Trudy. Uh, show me that booty. Give, give me. <laughs> I knew I was coming. All right, uh, Seth Saganachi. He's had a couple of good ones. He he seemed he, he seemed to get the, the hot take concept. All right. Uh, first one, let's see here. Also, if you were thinking of ideas to do episodes post-show, we've just, <laughs> you just used one right now, so. Yeah, well, you know, I, let's leave everything on the table. Uh, Seth said, Jill is sometimes a total asshole towards Tim for seemingly no reason. Sure, he's an accident-prone bonehead, but she knew that long before they were married. I assume the audience is supposed to find her zingers funny because Tim is dumb, but some, sometimes it's cringe level mean. Hmm. I can't really think of any of those off the top of my head. I mean, like conversations where like he'll walk into a room and like sort of just be talking about something in earnest and then she'll just like sort of like, I don't know, roast him before he even says anything stupid. I don't know. She's not. I, I get where he's coming from. I maybe wouldn't go so heavy on that, but I, I guess I do sort of get it. Okay. I, I need I need a specific example, I guess. All right. Uh, Seth Jordan wants an example, so go ahead and yep. tweet at tweet us. Tweet at us. This next one's a little stronger. Uh, the show would have existed basically the same had Mark never existed. Over the course <laughs> of eight seasons, I know he was goth for a little bit, stole a pocket knife from Harry's, and did karate. That's basically it. It was a focal point in the pilot, ironically, to fizzle out later. Uh, yeah, that's he's, a, that's, he's that's a good right. take and a hot take. He's a hundred percent right, though. Like, I mean, the show. I guess the only thing I would push back on is if JTT leaves and it's just Brad and there's no Mark. It's a very different show. It's it's um, harder for sure. So yeah, I don't know that the sh- Brad Brad looks so good in Mark's tiny shadow. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And I, I'm trying to think. There was one. Oh. Uh. What was it? Dagobah said that Randy, he put Randy uh, is greater than Mark and Brad, but did not elaborate on it. That's a really scalding take, uh, perhaps <laughs> too hot for me to handle. And if I'm, if I'm going to pay it any credence, I'm going to need some reasons why. Um, there were some other ones. Uh, Danny J said that just like, it's, this isn't a super hot take, but it's just like there was more sex on the show than she remembered. And uh, it's kind of scarred her childhood memories. So I, I definitely agree with so that. So is that our fault? Have we been playing that up too much? I don't know. Hey, I just got to gotta talk about what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, that's that's about it. We got to get into the show. But uh, Jordan, that was, that was fun. I enjoyed talking about hot takes with you. Oh, man. It was so hot in there. And this episode is part of these hot takes. So we should move into episode 193, Young at Heart, written by Bruce Ferber and Lloyd Garver. They last did Whitewater. Uh, where it's, it's Tim's birthday, he wants to go on a NASCAR race, and he has to go rafting. That Poor one, guy. that one sucked. <laughs> what was the the guide's name? Kyle. Kyle. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was a winner. Aired February sixteenth, nineteen ninety eight. Alternative titles: one, two, three, four. I got four. Five. All right, go ahead. The breast of intentions. Mm, I don't think start. any anyone had the breast of intentions, but you no, know. but but it's a good title. How about uh, revving Tim's engine? Okay, good. How about looking for the green light? <laughs> I have a look one as well. The look of love is in your eyes. I love it when you sing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's for you baby all right this is uh this one would work better if you could see how i typed it uh but i'll just try to accentuate the right words you better watch your man because of the watch i have a watch as well ready yep watch yourself <laughs> uh, exclamation point included here's one a real horse's ass <laughs> i have a horse one wow, as well we were really aligned here I won't sing this one because I don't really know the words of the song, but it's just Mustang Sally. Man, I think I've done that one before. No. I really think it, I think it was within the last couple months. Not Mustang no. Sally, but I think it was like Mustang Bradley when Brad got his car. Probably. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right, this last one. Um, huh. <laughs> I, guess I like I'll, that you're already laughing. I guess I'll just go for it. 
Uh-huh. Autoerotic as Tim's creation. <laughs> um, like autoerotic asphyxiation. I get it, man. You don't have to explain it. You, you know, you're tying a rope or, you know. It, it, okay. It, it went All with right. a, a Barrymore, lost, lost their lives that way. Uh, yeah, so autoerotic as Tim's creation. Um, yeah, it's a Hall of Famer for me, I would say. Yeah, um... Not for the faint of gonna, hearts or the young at yeah, hearts. I would say, yeah, that's that's, let's, that's let's certainly get, Mark would love that one. I'll say that. <laughs> Mark would make a short film about it. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're on tool time, and it's rodeo day. And uh, I don't know. I used to think rodeos were a little weird, but then I learned in Osceola County that uh, instead of having certain holidays, they have a, a rodeo day that you get off. So I guess it's a thing. And people love it. So they're going to love it on this show. Al is, I mean, he's extremely dressed up. And his hat is wild. And maybe we'll talk a little bit more about his hat in this scene. But it's a salute to Rodeos. Um, Auburn Hills is hosting the championship. I wonder if they're having it at the Palace. Do you think so? Yeah, definitely. A roper comes out. And it's not an adult. It's a 12-year-old named Ty Sisko. Everyone's surprised, I guess. I don't know. Tim's disappointed, which is... I don't get I don't get what they're going for here, but um, did you notice? Just I want to talk, circle back on the hat a little bit. When he like bends down and stuff, it looks like his hat's gonna tip over. So it's almost like there's something on top of his head to keep the hat balancing. Hmm. Did you notice that? I definitely did not notice that. I wish I would have though. It's very weird. Uh, Tim is very condescending to Ty, and the music is cued, and Ty does some rope action for about. Three seconds? Four seconds? Quite short. And then Tim says, you know what? I can do better. And an obvious stunt double <laughs> hops in. Which I guess is kind of the joke, right? Yes. Okay. It is the joke. And he's doing some crazy rope tricks for a while. So, um, It's pretty stupid. Yeah, I don't know. They were kind of mean to this kid. At least Tim was. I, I, don't, I just feel like we've seen this so many times where Tim is like introducing someone and the person is like either a, a kid or a woman. It's often like, oh um, man. It's usually a woman. It's, it's not like, a kid. I thought a garbage man was going to be a woman. Oh man. Um, and we get that later in this episode because the mechanic's a girl. You're right. That is exactly what we get. Um, is this the same hat that uh, Al wore in the poker Boy. episode way back in the day. That was kind of I, was I was wondering. Thinking. It would be a good callback, but I did not. I did not circle back to see it. But yeah, it has the same. They're at least related hats, perhaps cousins. Yeah, I think they're. <laughs> I think they're probably cousins. <laughs> Home. Uh, we're talking anniversary, and Jill. She's Jones in to go to the new French restaurant in town because uh, the Italian one that they go to all the time. There's a real bad waiter named uh, Antonio, and so they're out on Sorrentino. News to me. They, this is the first time they've ever really acknowledged like that he's, I don't know. I mean, the, the joke has just been they go there and see him all the time. I, I, it's refreshing to hear them talk about it, because you, <laughs> because you would if it were real. Right. Um, uh, conversation shifts to red light. Ooh, before, you, before you leave that, did you get that Jill compared the waiter to Dracula? Yeah, I didn't write it down, though. Um I'm going to save all... Well, I'm, it's not my choice. Drac will not be coming back <laughs> until our Halloween spooktacular in October. So It's not my choice. I don't have any say in it, so don't even try. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry to interrupt. I'm no, sorry. It, was, it was good. Um, conversation shifts to red light cams, which are, in my opinion, uh, unethical. Um, <laughs> and Brad thinks so too. I, Brad agrees. There, I th- I think that at least in Illinois they were they were very prevalent for a while, and I think that they've taken a lot of them down um, for legal reasons. So I think that's good. Hey, if you want to if you want to get me running a red light, why don't you do it in person? Okay, catch me red handed yeah, with my have, red light. Have some stones, will you? Brad hates the idea. Uh, Tim comes in and he has a lead on repairing brad's mustang and he's gonna go check it out nice that they kept that along that thread i thought they were buying him a new car no i don't know they changed their mind hey that's their prerogative (laughs) uh at the end of the scene you didn't mention and and perhaps for good reason jill tricks tim uh into saying basically he doesn't know when their anniversary is so anniversary is a big deal for for you uh down there in florida 
Are they a big deal? Uh, well, this year we couldn't do very much, but usually we try to do okay. something. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, my parents just celebrated their 46th. Wow. That's great. I think my parents were, was it 40 last year? I don't know. But Well, sorry, I got you beat. <laughs> yeah, Brad and Fonda, gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Later. Let's go to the Mustang shop. What do you say? I, I'm jonesing for it. I've said jonesing right. twice. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> you must be jonesing for something. If I say the third today. time, I'm quitting. Uh. <laughs> Tim's at the Mustang shop. Uh, he walks in. Somebody's working on this Mustang and uh, Tim mistakes the mechanic for a guy. He, this, we, we mentioned this earlier. What a mistake. And Tim, Tim like instantly is a bit uncomfortable here, kind of for no real good reason. But uh, he gives her a test, uh, a verbal test, and Alex seems to know her stuff. Uh, I don't know if you want to do the bio now or later. Yeah, but... uh, Jenny McCarthy, probably one of the bigger people to show up on Home Improvement. Um, yep. Yeah, you know, if you'd asked me in 2007 who I thought the most beautiful woman in the world was, I might have told you Jenny McCarthy, <laughs> which is uh, both crazy and embarrassing. Um, best known for, you know, she was a, a model... She was in Playboy. Um, she got her start co-hosting a MTV game show, Singled Out, which was a little bit before our time. Uh, films, I remember it, though. Oh, really? Basket, yeah. Basketball, Diamonds, Scream 3, Santa Baby. She probably best. She was on The View for a while. She's probably best known at this point for being like an anti-vaxxer, which is unfortunate. Um, I know she's big on like serious radio, and she has, has or is currently one of the hosts on The Masked Singer, which uh, you're, not Your get, favorite show. you're not getting me to touch with a 10-foot pole. Um, I'll give her this. Like, she's had a very uh, like a varied and interesting career. She's done a lot of stuff, and she's still pretty popular um, for a certain demographic. Longtime listeners of the show will remember I, I used to live in St. Charles, Illinois, and uh, she and Donnie Wahlberg famously lived there like full-time. It was super strange. What? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I saw Donnie Wahlberg at a Target. It was awesome. I never saw her, though. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't have a real strong opinion of her. as a, as a. I mean, I don't I don't like anti-vaxxing stuff. Um, <laughs> but as far as, like, her in various things, like, I remember her in Basketball and maybe, like, yeah. scary, scary Movie 3. Uh, but, yeah, she's shut I'm, up in I'm a bunch sure of, you and I had the same opinion of her when we were younger. Yeah, so you know, she's, she, she's filling out the, the high school boys checklist in, in a couple of ways. Um, and we'll see that later with Brad. And we'll see that we'll see that later with Brad. Um, but, yeah, I knew she was going to come in this, so uh, I, was, I wasn't excited to see her. But, you know, it just means we're closer to interested. the end. So. <laughs> interested, I guess. You know, someone famous. So intrigued uh, carry on I, th- I don't think she's that bad in this role though i, don't know. I actually think she was pretty good she does exactly yeah. what they would have what you know like what she should be doing no more and no less um so yeah uh you know what wins at Al- tim over is alex's knowledge of the three stooges so it's yeah. not all about cars i think tim. what really wins him over is when she changes out of her clothes and uh <laughs> he sees her, <laughs> he, he sees her not in her like jumpsuit or whatever i don't know yeah so she does that immediately after uh tim is attracted to her right away they take a ride in the car to figure out what's going on um they're talking about transmission problems they're talking about their life basically they both had a bunch of brothers lots of car talks it's they're funny. bonding the funniest thing is like this is how you know tim is like attracted to her he's like i have four brothers and she's like I have four brothers. And he's like, no way. That's so interesting. It's like the kind of crap he would say if you were like, I don't know, trying to flirt with somebody. Cause it's actually not interesting. Not that interesting. It is strange though. And then Tim almost runs a red light and does an accidental boob grab. Yeah. He stopped short as, uh, as crap or I don't know, somebody on Seinfeld. I'm going to say Frank <laughs> Costanza would say, um, Tim is a bad boy in this episode. He's a ba- uh, he's a naughty boy. He's very, very na- naughty. he's very naughty on this one. Yeah, it's uh for me it's worse than what happened with Jill and Ian. I don't know how you feel, but I'm trying to remember what happened with uh, Ian. I don't know. I remember just... he, the the lasting impression was like Ian came onto her more. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I don't. She didn't tell Tim about. It. I don't. Know. It's funny on Home Improvement how often they're having subplots where uh, one, person <laughs> it's a miracle. Is, one person is very attracted to a person that is not their significant other. I don't know. Do Tim and Jill have an open marriage and they just haven't said it out We're starting to, starting to feel like it. It's also, I don't know, kind of a bad sign for them. But, all right. Great Marty appearance here. What are we doing? 
<laughs> you were wondering how we were going to have so many Marty appearances. The last two episodes, he's there for about 30 seconds. He's sitting alone at the table, sort of contemplating his lot in life. Um, I don't know if that's true. Jill comes in, and uh, for the anniversary, she got Tim an old Hamilton watch, just like, I think it's a... Alexander Hamilton. Family Sorry. heirloom. Uh, oh, you like Hamilton? That is unique of you. Um, <laughs> I watched it as well. I also liked it. Uh, Brad comes <laughs> you're, in. You're such a jerk. <laughs> Brad comes in, and he's going to Jason's to study. One, love hearing about Jason. Two, yeah. Jason, Jason's to study. I think we know what that, uh, that's code, yeah, that's code for. Yeah, study. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. A bummer that Jason didn't make more appearances. I know. Tim comes home. He's going back to check out Brad's car. Hmm. Uh, he's, he's worked with the mechanic every night this week, and uh, he hasn't mentioned uh, anything about uh, that person's sex, uh, and it doesn't seem like he plans to. A lot of double entendres from Jill, uh, word jokes. I don't remember exactly what they were, but like, I don't know, like things like, boy, she sure, or no, that mechanic sure has got you exhausted, stuff like that. I don't know. That's just yeah. an example. That's pretty good. pretty good. They they were so generic that you could make one up on the yeah, spot like that. Yeah, that's easy. Later, the boys uh, show up with flowers for Jill. Wait, wait, wait. You forgot the, the running joke that uh, Brad thinks that this watch was stolen from Grandma. I'm not sure I picked up on that. Really? It happens like three times in this episode. I watched this episode like four days ago. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that You want to talk more about it? Is it good? He thinks uh, it's, it's stolen. Kind of, it's actually it's actually kind of funny when Tim says it later, but yeah, it, it just it started here. Basically. Didn't land. So. Uh, all right, anniversary day. Sorry. That's all right. It's important. Uh, it's super important. Jill receives flowers from Mark and Brad. She thinks it's for her anniversary, but later we find out that's not true. Phone rings. Tim's gonna be late for their anniversary dinner. That's bad. That's real bad. Um, he's he's working with the mechanic. Yeah, that's, I mean, come on, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, mistakes were definitely made throughout this uh, this episode by Tim. This one is, that's the worst one. Like, I don't, it's just, Pretty like, egregious. Pretty bad. Um, Jill got, Jill spills water all over the mail? Is that what happened? That's what I wrote. <laughs> yeah, she's, like, fiddling in the kitchen, and then spills some water on the it mail, was kind and of it right up. It was kind of bad acting, if I recall. Just like, oh, yeah. no, water. But you know what? They really planted this, like, red light ticket scheme. It's right, true. Right in the opening, opening acts, and now we see it come to fruition. I gotta say, I did not remember that, so I was, like, kind of pleasantly surprised that they brought it back in this way. Um... She thought Brad got a ticket, but it was actually Tim, and of course, he was caught red-handed with his hand on uh, Jenny McCarthy's breast. Uh, Uh, Kind of funny, you know. Yeah, caught in the act. All right, at the anniversary dinner, things are really going to hit the fan here. So, Tim comes in with a gift, and he's late. Uh, At least he got a gift. But Jill, you know, she's going to come right out with it. She says, who are you with tonight? And she shows him the picture... Tim is more upset that he got a ticket than kind of explaining himself here, which is a bad sign. And then he he goes on to try to explain himself. And as he's doing so, in comes the hated waiter of Antonio. And he's as sassy as ever, Adam. As sassy as ever, I would say. And uh, we do learn that basically he got got a bunch of lawsuits at Sorrentino's. And so he had to be let go. So naturally, so. this new restaurant had to scoop them up right away. Yeah, the new French restaurant, they were hurting for They don't waiters, do background apparently. checks. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, they're going to regret it. Back to the conversation. Uh, you know, why didn't you tell me about her? And Tim is making up excuses and basically saying, like, you know, I like cars more than... He's just trying to, you know, push the blame off of himself. And the night has been ruined. And... Tim, to try to salvage it, basically says, look at my gift. Uh, Sentimental moment here where a framed picture from college shows up, which I thought was pretty funny, actually. You know, they've got Tim and Jill in the 70s, so Tim's got, like, a mullet and a mustache. He looks like he does in his mugshot, kind of. Yeah, he does look like that, and and Jill looks the same as well. That's kind of of a lousy gift, though, to be honest. Like, she got him a nice watch. What anniversary is it, you know? That's what I'm wondering. What year are we on? Is it tin or is it paper? I don't know. (laughs) Jill's back in the mood, though, with that framed picture. It did not take much. Wow, I know. Women truly are the fairer sex, you know? Right. (laughs) This is just evidence of that. 
And uh, the joke is right here, Adam. It's, uh, Tim says, did you steal this from my mother? So yeah, that, was the, just, that was the watch show. I don't know. I think you should go back and watch it and just watch for this thread. And you'll, you'll really... I will definitely do that. Yeah, I think sure. you'll get a chuckle. Okay, yeah. I'm going to do that, definitely. Yep. He loves the watch. Ring, 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 ring. Oh, no. <laughs> Things are going to go south. <laughs> you look how I'm acting this out. <laughs> Uh, Tim answers and gets very distracted. Guess what? It's Alex. And he starts, like, losing service, so he starts going around and, like, going onto other people's plates and stuff. Really, we're just trying to distract the audience and the camera. Freaking freaking Houdini. (laughs) We go back to the table after Tim samples some food from somebody else's table. Kind of funny. Uh, And Jill has bounced. She's gone. It was an impressive uh, exit. Because he, I mean... You know, he's, it seems like he's on the phone for a long time. In reality, it's probably 10 seconds, maybe 12, and she's she's gone without a trace. I will say I was kind of surprised that she did that. So they had me a little bit here. Yeah, Tim, I mean, bad enough you're going to be late for your anniversary dinner. You're taking this call and then trying to hear her out. Like, I don't know. He, he You know, he should have just waited. Something everybody should learn is that when you're at dinner, you just silence your cell phone. Don't even bring it to the table. Wow. Just... Enjoy who you're with. This guy said, you know, you're saying it, man, and I appreciate it. Someone someone had to say it. Oh, my um, goodness. Antonio has a line earlier in the scene where he's like, where Tim orders champagne because he's like, he's like, give me an expensive bottle of champagne because he's trying to smooth things over. And Antonio's yeah. like, champagne on an anniversary. How original. Man, I hate this guy. Yeah, I just take the champagne and smack it over his head. He's like, <laughs> he's like, cake on your birthday how original like, yeah, what do you, like, what do you who, want from me <laughs> get out of here uh, i would i mean he's he's getting zero tip ever you know he's a deadbeat all right home uh short scene from based on my notes tim comes home Oof. uh and asks jill why she left and <laughs> and jill is very mad and that's she is all steamed. i that's all I, well rightfully so come on this is awful yeah I mean, she she just details like how hard it was to get that watch, and then just see him just like drooling on the phone. Yeah, it's it's short, but you know, Jill is mad, and I believe I I mean I believe the acting here. She is upset. It's great. Hey, wouldn't you be? Uh, <laughs> next scene. You know, Tim's got to he's got to figure things out. He's got to talk things through, and he's got to get back on Jill's good side. And I know just the person who can help him. Mm. Let's play a clip at the fence. Wilson, what are you doing? Planting snow peas? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Tim. Did you realize that in Thailand they sprinkle lemongrass on their lawn to ward off a raging storm? What are they sprinkling the lawn to ward off a raging wife? <laughs> Jewelry. <laughs> Jill's having a problem with my new mechanic, Alex. Well, I thought you were crazy about his work. Well, he is actually a she. <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> You never told me your mechanic was a woman. Didn't tell Jill either. When she found out that I spent so much time with Alex, she got really upset. Why didn't you tell Jill that Alex was a woman? It never occurred to me. (laughs) (laughs) And why did you spend every night with her this week? To work on Brad's car. (laughs) And it took you that long to fix the problem in the gearbox? No, that took about an hour and a half, but we did other stuff. Ah, what other stuff? You know, am I on trial here? Oh, I'm very sorry, Tim. I'm just asking, if your mechanic was a man, would you have spent all that time over at the garage? What does that have to do with anything? Well, maybe you withheld information from Jill because actually, you are attracted to Alex. No, 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 maybe. (laughs) Who hasn't fantasized about dating uh, Ark Welder? (laughs) I am attracted to her. (laughs) It's horrible. No, it's not horrible yeah, as long as you don't act on it. Well, I would never act on it. You want to be sure not to put yourself in a situation where you could be tempted. You know, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like playing with fire. Mm. Unless it's on tool time. <laughs> we've all seen what happens there. Alex? Who was at the fence, Adam? It was actually Wilson. I know a lot, oh, of, people, a lot of people listening will be surprised by that. Uh, he's planting lemongrass to keep away... A storm, uh, which I know is something you used to do. I don't know. If- I actually saw lemongrass yesterday. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> <You're-> <laughs> that about ends that joke. 
Uh, Tim explains um, explains work. I don't know what that means. Explains the car work, I guess, uh, and how he never told Will. My notes are garbage here. Okay, here's <laughs> what happened. I can just say it because I don't need to read it. Tim explains the situation uh, and comes to the realization that he did not tell Jill that the mechanic was female and attractive and so on because he was attracted to her and he kept finding mm. things to fix because he was definitely attracted to her and he withheld information because he was definitely attracted to her. Um, Wilson says, like, hey, man, it's okay if you're super attracted to her as long as you don't act on it. And Tim's like, all right, guess that figures this out. Got to go. It was, Come it, was on, it was not very helpful at all. It's like, well, at the very end, I, you did leave out. He says, don't put yourself in the situation where you could be tempted. So... Too late. Um, he just kind of undermined it with that first statement because I think Tim heard something that he probably didn't need to hear. So yeah, right. yeah, it's bad. Tim goes back to the shop and him and Alex have sex. Uh, <laughs> wow, no. wouldn't that be wild finale? <laughs> Over. Uh, Alex comes out all this dressed week up on a very special tool time. <laughs> <laughs> all the improvement. No, I call it tool time. She she's dressed she's dressed up to go out for a date it looks like uh, and he Tim comes in to break off the car relationship. There's lots of innu- innuendo that you kind of you know you alluded to this with Jill earlier. It's kind of the same thing here. My pistons but Tim, are firing. <laughs> Tim, Tim is explaining himself, and as he does, Alex's boyfriend comes in. What a beefcake he is. Uh, Tim feels like an idiot. And he kind of leaves them alone. And she says, like, you know, you're attractive. You're, you're a very attractive man. You remind me of my father, which is the worst thing that Tim wants to hear. So, But you know what? It humbles him. And that's what he needs at this moment. Yeah. I mean, I guess they had to do this. But she was definitely flirting with him. Yeah. And you don't flirt with your dad, I hope. <gasps> <laughs> I've never done it. <laughs> Home. <laughs> Tim wants to uh, talk to Jill. She's studying, you know, surprise, surprise. Uh, PhD. PhD at U of M, naturally. Adam, uh, when are you getting your PhD? Uh, ooh, probably never at this point, I would say. Anything can happen, but I think that that ship has kind of sailed. I, if I was going to do it, I should have done it right after grad school, right about when I started <laughs> this podcast. So, Jordan, <laughs> if you had to choose PhD or podcast, which one do you want? I mean, I'm glad you picked podcasts for so many reasons. I mean, it's been better for my career as well, so no problem. <laughs> you have talked about it in a lot of interviews. Let's see here. He admits he was attracted to her, uh, but says, hey, it's all good because she wasn't attracted to me. So uh. the situation is fine. Uh, <laughs> Jill is happy that he made an idiot of himself. He says the father thing, etc. She's really enjoying it. And it's just kind of like a, oh, it happens kind of thing here, which I, I don't know what you do. That's not what happens, Adam. I don't know. That's sort of like what <laughs> I felt like. She was like, oh, you know what? It happens. We all are attracted to other people. Uh, I certainly have been with Ian, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's where she can't call the That the is pot. true. But like, I don't know. That This is worse than that. They reminisce about the past, and Tim remembers a key memory. And uh, I don't know if this, I think that this is a, a callback to earlier. He, uh, that he looks at her the way she wanted to be looked at earlier. I think he doesn't mm. look at her in a way she wants. Uh, they kiss. And uh, as is the case with, uh, you know, most episodes of Home Improvement, it does sort of conclude in, in what we can only assume will be sex, making it one of the sexiest sitcoms of all of time. Of all time. I am surprised that you skipped over a mention of the Colonel. Jordan, you just can't get everything, all right? So when I skip over things, just fill in the gaps. Um, well, you know, Tim recounts a story, you know, here's the, the way day thing he about, told her. Yeah, go ahead, and I'll say my well, he, he talks about the day that he told her he loved her, and that day was also the day that the colonel chased him out of the house with a saber. Yeah, Tim talks about the colonel in the present tense, like he's not dead. Tim's like, what's up with that guy? It's like, he's six feet under. Like, I don't know, that's sort of a weird way to say it. Like, what was up with that guy? Or just don't say anything at all. He's like, what's up with that guy? It's like, well, he's dead. I don't know. I should go try to find out. Um, go ahead. Finish her off here. And then, uh, final scene. Brad comes into the mechanic shop. Uh, he must have... I guess Tim talked about the mechanic to Brad? Or 
over yeah, here heard the fight? I don't really know what happened curious. here. But. Yeah, it was Tim like, yeah, she's so hot, dude, blonde hair, great. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of a weird, yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, he turns up the charm as he comes in. He, I think he sprays some uh, mouth spray in his mouth. What is it? Freshener or whatever? I don't know what you call it. It's a dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got really long hair. Um, it's your classic missing or mistaken personality mistaken it happens person. a lot on the show <laughs> um people should just wait until they see someone's face before they like i don't know say anything because it does seem pride to happen comes a lot. before the fall well said uh i will say i'm not even gonna say it okay roll credits fade to black auto erotic <laughs> as tim speaks <laughs> why why was it that one uh that's the one i'm most proud of uh yeah Jordan, Castle's Corner. Hop in the Mustang, cruise on down to Castle's Corner. I'm going to let you go first because I think you like this one more than I did. I'm getting that feeling. I didn't mind it. I thought it was fine. Um, Things that I liked specifically, I think my bar has become so low (laughs) that it doesn't take very much for me to be pleased with an episode. Uh, things that don't work, I guess. The rodeo stuff at the beginning, like, it doesn't really tie into anything. It's not really interesting. I guess the joke of the stunt double is okay, but yeah. Poor Ty. He just, I don't know that he was up for the moment here, so didn't make for a very, (laughs) very memorable opening scene. Um, you get a mention of Dracula and Colonel in one episode. That's kind of amazing. I, I, I think... It's interest not interesting, but we haven't really done this type of a plot with Tim necessarily. We've done it where the people come on to Tim, the people come on to Jill. Jill kind of is attracted to other people. We haven't done it from Tim's perspective, so I think that's relatively novel. And I, you know, I think Jenny McCarthy we mentioned did a good job acting in this episode, did what she needed to do. So I think that's fine. Uh, Tim is kind of a buffoon in this episode, which. I don't know. You and I go back and forth on this. Like, is he really this stupid? Um, I don't know that this is so, like, stupid. It's not as dumb as, it's, like... It's, it's boneheaded. It's selfish. I do, but it's not, like, stupid in the way where he's, like, at the computer going, ah, uh, like, it's yeah, not... Yeah, I guess so. It's not, like, primitive man, like, stupid caveman stuff. It's, like, just, like, a dude that is, like, thinking with the wrong part of his body, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't mind it. I, I don't, I'm don't. i struggling to think of like things I really, really liked about this episode, but I, I thought it was fine watching it, so <laughs> that's as good as a review as you can get. Yeah, that is glowing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really like this one. Um, for me... You're just, you're just mad because she's an anti-vaxxer? Is that the problem? I don't like that she is an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> no, I do not. I, I am against that. Uh, hot take. I think vaccinations are good. <laughs> Uh, and important. I don't like polio. Yeah, important. Hot take. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I see your point where like we haven't exactly seen Tim be attracted to someone, but I feel like I've seen this plot or a very similar plot happen too many times. Well, next episode we're gonna have it with Brad and Samantha. So get ready for that. Oh, okay. Where someone's attracted to someone else. Brad's attracted to some other woman. Stop spoiling it for me. <laughs> I just wait come, till Mark's episode come comes. in fresh. I don't, I, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll watch it if Brad does it. But, like, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of played out. I, I think, uh, I don't know. I just I just did not connect to this. And I, I think Jenny McCarthy is doing a fine job. Um, oddly, I get, this is going to sound weird, I don't know that it went far enough for me. Like, like, I don't know that I really bought their, like, sexual chemistry or whatever. Like, I felt like too much of it was happening, like, off screen where it's like, yeah, he's been there five days. Like, I want to see him, like, flirting a little bit more or, like, actual, like, bad choices being made instead of hearing about it sort of, like, off camera and, like, a shorthand. Like, oh, he's been over there the whole week. I don't know. Like You want to you wanna see those scenes, like, when they went to the club and ex- that one woman was so attracted exactly to him? Exactly right, yeah. And I, or, like, the Ion Tim where they're playing pool. Like, I want something like that where it's just, like, but I know that that does sort of go against the whole point where it's like she actually isn't attracted to him supposedly, even though I feel like she was. But I don't know. I just, I don't, I just, I don't know. I just didn't connect to it in that way. I, I think I'm just tired of seeing these kind of plots. The only thing they missed is Jenny McCarthy could have said like, "Oh, I'm just a flirt" or something like that. That would have been a would very have typical been way. Would have been better and would have. 
I mean, yeah, that would have made sense. Um, rodeo opening, not funny, bad. Uh, I don't need to see this waiter anymore. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you cannot do something with this waiter that I have not already seen, so please stop trying. Uh, Marty, oof, okay, uh, getting that, uh, getting that uh, screen time, I guess. Um, the boys don't have much going on, really. I mean, I guess there's some okay Brad stuff. Uh, I felt like this, just the Wilson scene was bad, sort of concluded just in a very uh, convenient sort of way. I don't know what you're supposed to do necessarily if you're in this position as a married couple, but um, I don't know. I just felt like she got over it very quickly. Uh, things that I liked, I, know, I thought Jenna McCarthy was fine. Uh, and I liked the part where... Mm, <laughs> you didn't have to start that sentence, I don't but you like, did. I don't like red light cams, so when someone says they don't like them, I like yeah. that. I think the reason you like Brad so much is you and him really seem to have the same set of moral values. Politically as well, yeah, we're definitely <laughs> <laughs> joking. <laughs> Close. No way. You know, I I remember, I'm thinking of like grading characters from Home Improvement, and we remember the Tom Poston character being, you know, that kind of stickler in at least a couple episodes, and I thought, oh man, that was kind of annoying the second time, but there's no one more annoying than in, like Antonio. Yeah, I agree, and it's just like, man, I don't know, he's like a specter haunting the show, they can't even go to a different restaurant or he's going to be there. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's... I'd be doing takeout for the rest of my life if I were the Taylors. I didn't like it the first time, so when I'm seeing it six or seven times later, maybe that many, maybe only five, I, I, I'm, I'm over it. I just can't do it anymore. Hmm. And that's what we're going to say about this episode. We're over it. We can't do it anymore. So let's move on to social media. You can reach out to us on thehomeandpodcast.com, Facebook and Twitter at Home and Podcast. We're on YouTube as well. And you can support us by going to patreon.com slash home and podcast. You can also support us by going to our Redbubble uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. website, redbubble.com, and search home improvement. I wanted to bring this up because last episode you mentioned that the Lions just recovered a fumble. A great throwback, a classic from the show. And we would be remiss if we did not mention that there is Lions Just Recovered a Fumble merch on a Redbubble store. So, and that's actually kind of an interesting design, whereas our Home Improvement Podcast logo... I like it. It's okay. I mean, it's okay, but it's just like... I don't know. It's it's more unique, I guess I would say. So, go to Redbubble, uh, and I think Adam said he's going to write something handwritten to people. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I got to do that. Thanks for bringing it up. Um... <laughs> We'll see what happens. I, I will do it eventually. Yeah, Redbubble. Um, yeah, I don't know. Buy the merch. We don't get that much money off of it, but it is just kind of cool and funny, and people will not know what it is. So you'll have, it'll be a conversation starter. And in the times you'll of have co- to explain in, in, yourself. In the times of COVID, isn't that what we all want? Someone to ask us about our shirt in public. Um, <laughs> I don't have much for Twitter other than what I shared at the start of the show. Okay. Uh, I don't even have a poll. So. Whoa. No poll, you know we're getting to the end. Absence makes the polls grow fonder. Hmm. Longer, probably. Could be. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything to share. So. Okay, next episode, we are covering a two-parter. Love's Labor Lost, part one and two. And uh, we'll just go ahead and say we are going, that's going to be in one episode. We're going to combine those. Uh, I don't have a good justification for it. I just kind of wanted to do that. I think maybe my thought process at the time was like, if it's a continuation, like, I don't know, it'd be more fresh in my mind if we just do it all at once. So it'll probably be a longer episode. It will be both parts of love, Love's Labor Lost? or love Love's Lip- Labor Lost. A tongue twister. So yeah, we're going to combine those. So uh, double the home and podcast next week. Everybody's free. <laughs> perfect i can't wait all right well hey listeners thank you for listening jordan thank you for joining me i guess i should say take care take care everybody